Steve Dotto here. I am thrilled you are joining us today. Today, we're going to take a look at my five favorite Dropbox features. Now, the reason I decided that I had to do this particular video was a couple of weeks ago, I did a comparison between Dropbox and Google Drive to determine which was better. And I chose the winner being Google Drive. But I said at the end of that, despite the fact that I think Google Drive is better, I'm still going to use Dropbox. And that caused a lot of email to come into my inbox with people saying, Steve, Google Drive won. Why don't you switch everything over to Google Drive? And it, I think it kind of speaks to my philosophy around productivity software, is that when you have a tool that really works for you, there has to be a profound reason to change, not just a few extra features. We've got to, that knowing how a tool works intimately and having it a part of your workflow is more valuable than a few extra features. Does that make sense? So. I also like being a very complicated person. I don't like anybody being able to understand me too much. It adds an air of mystery about me. Is that is that working as well? Yes, even though I think Dropbox is inferior, I do choose to use it. And inferior is actually a very strong term. They are so close as far as performance. Dropbox is such an elegant tool that I don't really feel I suffer at all by continuing to use it. But having said that, I thought I would share with you now the five features that I just really, really, really like in Dropbox. Uh, some of them I use every day. Some of them I use every day without actually knowing I use them every day. So let's dive into them, shall we? The first and number one thing that I use in Dropbox all the time and that I think is an absolute essential and has become second nature to me is the idea of quickly sharing files. Now, if I open my Dropbox folder here, one thing I get asked for an awful lot is uh, is publicity photos. If I'm doing uh, if I'm doing a speaking engagement or I'm working with somebody on some different project, they ask me for publicity photos. So I've got a whole series of publicity photos here. Some of them are large and some of them are small. Rather than emailing them as an attachment, all I do is I go and I choose the photo that I want to share. Let's say it's going to be this photo here, and then what I do is I right click on that photo, and I say share Dropbox link, which then copies, let me go share Dropbox link, which then copies, you can see right here, it copies the URL, it copies a URL onto my clipboard, which then I can embed in an email. Let's just do it. Let me open a new uh, browser window. And so I will embed then this character string, see this right here, in an email. If I send that to somebody, they click on it, what happens is they are then brought into my Dropbox folder and they get to download that particular photo. Isn't that slick? This works for large files, small files, for videos. It works for everything. So this ability to second nature, just right click on any kind of uh, a document you have stored in your Dropbox folder, say share Dropbox link, and then be able to send that to somebody by email, have them open it and be able to download the file right away regardless, regardless of how large or small it is. That is a tremendous convenience. So that's the first. My, and that is the that has just become second nature to me. I just share it like that all the time. The second thing that I really appreciate in Dropbox is a little more complicated to explain, but what it is, is because I live on multiple computers, it allows me to store the preferences files for my most used apps in Dropbox so that regardless of which computer I'm on, I use the same preferences. Does that make sense? I will show you an example. Uh, I love this tool called Text Expander. Text Expander is a little keyboard macro tool that's only available on the Mac. There are some similar products in Windows. And actually, we've got a terrific video where I show you how to use Text Expander if you're interested. Windows users can use a similar product called Brevi. Uh, works almost the exact same. There's a couple of other products as well in the Windows world, but Text Expander dominates in the Mac space. I just love this particular productivity app. Now, what I do though is, let me open Text Expander here, is because I'm using Text Text Expander half the time on my notebook and about half the time on my desktop, which you see right here, is I go into my Text Expander preferences here, and here within the preferences, I ask it to synchronize my preferences through Dropbox. So it creates a preferences file in Dropbox. Now, when I've got the same selection set on my notebook, as is on my desktop, now I've got the exact same keyboard shortcuts on all of my computers. Now it makes sense, doesn't it? This is an awesome way of, of uh, using one app on multiple computers, but having the same set of preferences on all of them. Now you can do this for if you're for web browsers, for like Firefox, Chrome, which I use, automatically does this as far as syncing preferences. But the, you'll find a lot of different places where you can use this syncing, doing it through Dropbox with the preferences file. It is an exceptional way to use Dropbox. 
Now, number three on my list of awesome Dropbox uh, features is the ability to do something called selective sync. What is selective sync, Steve? This is especially useful if you have a, uh, a computer that has limited hard drive space, if you have the free Dropbox accounts and so you have limited drop space on Dropbox so you don't have gigabytes and gigabytes of space on Dropbox. What it does is it allows me to, if I go into my Dropbox menu and I click here on the gear icon, go into preferences, do you see that? I've gone to the menu, into the uh, gear icon, into preferences, and in preferences, you have to go to advanced. It's a little bit of a journey to get into it. But there you have something called selective sync. And you can set this for each of your computers. Within this, you can choose which of your folders within Dropbox you want to sync on each computer. Now, the syncing gives you backups. It gives you backups. So if you've, if you've got unlimited hard drive space, unlimited Dropbox space, it's probably a great idea to sync everything unless you're finding that it's slowing things down too much by having everything in sync. But I doubt that that will happen in this day and age. Far more important is if you have limited, say you've got a, a, a MacBook Air or a small notebook computer that has a, uh, that has a solid state drive. So maybe you only have 128 gigabytes of space on that drive. 60 of that's used up already for operating system and the applications and that sort of stuff. So you've got limited amount of space uh, available to you. You, ha you don't have unlimited storage. So in that particular case, on that notebook, you might go through here and say, you know what? We don't need to back up any of these files. I don't need these files on it. I can access them through Dropbox on the web, but I don't need them stored locally for offline access. Because what happens when we sync files in Dropbox is we create a, a, a we, is we have the file on our computer. We create a copy in Dropbox and then through the sync feature, it creates another copy on the other computer. So this way here, we can selectively choose exactly which folders and which files we want to have living on each computer. Valuable if you have limited hard drive space, valuable if you have the free Dropbox account and you don't have a whole bunch of space in Dropbox to be able to sync things. So the selective sync is my, is that my third? I think it's my third. It is my third. It's my third favorite Dropbox feature. My fourth favorite Dropbox feature is the ability to show previous editions of documents. If you're in Dropbox and you uh, say you're working collaboratively on a document, you've got a shared document that you're working back and forth on, or even if it's a document that you're working yourself on and it's going through multiple revisions and then you say, really, I, what did I have? I, I, I saved it and I, what I really want is to see what it looked like three versions ago or two or three saves before. Now, if you don't have revision control in whatever app you're in, you have revision control within Dropbox. What you do is you go into your Dropbox folder here and or into your Dropbox file. And let me find a file that I'll have multiple versions of. Uh, well, here's my template that I use for my radio show graphics. I've probably got a couple of saved versions there. So I can click here and go show. So now I'm, I've right clicked my mouse on the file within my Dropbox folder. When I right click my mouse, I can say show previous versions. Then it then launches Dropbox's web browser or Dropbox on the web, and it shows me the previous versions of that document. So then I can go back and I can open the previous version of that document and I can use it or see exactly what we had at that particular time. Not always going to be useful, certainly not something that you're going to be using every day, but when you do need it, it is a real, a real lifesaver. And the last thing is kind of a quick it's a tip for really quickly using Dropbox. I have a variety of different people who help me out, uh, my kind of my virtual team, who put different files in different Dropbox folders for me when they're ready. And I also move files into Dropbox occasionally uh, for sharing amongst my different computers and things like that. Now, if I need to see, if I need to quickly find one of the latest documents that was uploaded, I've got a few, I've got right here, I've got the, the latest few documents that were uploaded to Dropbox, but it's a list of only three. What I can do is I can go into my Dropbox, uh, Dropbox on the web, and by clicking under events, it shows me the last things in a chronological order that happened in Dropbox. And there you can see 11 minutes ago, I changed my text expander settings. There was a transcript that was uploaded seven hours ago. I stored these files. These are photos that I uploaded from my camera yesterday. And so you can see I can work my way through. So anything that's happened in the last few days, I can very quickly find here without having to navigate to the individual folders, which if you take a look at my Dropbox uh, account, I've got a lot of folders now in my Dropbox account because of all of the different projects that I'm on. So I really like this ability here to be able to go in and be able to chronologically see all of the events that have happened within my Dropbox account over a period of time. 
Dropbox isn't perfect, and Google Drive is ultimately probably going to significantly impact the number of people that use Dropbox as we move ahead. But for the time being, I, as I say, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick and continue to use Dropbox personally. It's an exceptionally well thought out service, and when you get to know an app as intimately as I know Dropbox, well, then the the productivity gain as a result of that uh, is really make makes it worth kind of sticking around and staying with the one that you know. I hope that you found this video to be useful. If you have, by all means, please subscribe to our channel here. It means that you get first access to all of the videos that we send out. And while you're at it, if you found this valuable, why not give us a like? We certainly appreciate that as well. I'm Steve Dotto. We'll see you next week.